Okay, I think it's time to uh, do a few problems with enzyme inhibition here and um, just enzymes in general, a couple different things, and uh, see if we can solve some problems and apply some of the knowledge that we learned in some of the other videos. So this first problem here says, on a single graph, sketch the oxygen binding curve for, you uh, excuse me, <laughs> sketch the oxygen binding curves you would expect for hemoglobin locked in the R form one locked in the T form and real hemoglobin. Indicate P50 for each curve and explain any difference observed. You do not need actual numbers. It is the shape of the curves that are important. Okay, so the shape of the, of the curves are important. So, let's see. The first thing I would do here is I would just draw sort of my axes and if you remember from the hemoglobin videos, I said that this is the partial pressure of oxygen, and this over here is this YO2, which is really just like a concentration of oxygen, essentially. Now, I might start here by saying, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw real hemoglobin, because I know what real hemoglobin looks like. We know it's an S-shaped curve, and that's due to having two BP... 2, 3 BPG in the blood, and we know it looks something like this. You know, give or take, some somewhere around there. That's what regular hemoglobin looks like. So I'll just say over here maybe normal, okay? Now, now once I have that, I know one thing. I know that hemoglobin locked in either the T form or the R form is not, is not going to show cooperative binding. Okay, the normal sigmoidal curve is going to be out the door. So, if I have hemoglobin locked in the R state, okay, it's going to resemble myoglobin. Because hemoglobin locked in the R state means that it binds oxygen very well. Um, so, it's going to look just like myoglobin. So, I might draw that one like this in orange. That would be something like that, okay? So, I might say... HG R state okay so HG R state right there okay so hemoglobin locked in the R state that means it's binding hemoglobin really uh, it's binding oxygen really well excuse me it's binding oxygen really tightly so it's going to look more like myoglobin okay now if hemoglobin's locked in the T state okay that's the inactive form or the deoxygenated form so this one here, oxygenated, now they want us to say what it is in the T form, which is the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin, which has low O2 affinity and releases O2 even when PO2 values are quite high. So that means it's going to be very easy to release PO2. So what, what, what would that look like? Well, I mean, just roughly speaking, since this doesn't have to necessarily be an accurate graph, it's going to look something like that. It's almost going to be a straight line, basically. And that's going to be hemoglobin in the T state. Okay? And, and that's pretty much exactly what it's going to look like. And this is just kind of, this question is just designed basically to test, you know, your ability to understand the differences in the curve. So if hemoglobin is normal, it shows the sigmoidal curve, everything's fine, it shows cooperative binding, meaning that it binds oxygen really tightly at high partial pressure of oxygen, so when the partial pressure of oxygen is high, such as places in the lungs, it binds oxygen really tightly, and as we slide down the curve, it gets easier and easier to release oxygen. So in places, say over here, where, um, you know, this might be the tissue or something like that, and that's, you know, 20 um, or so, 20 tor or so, or 40 tor, somewhere around there, and um, it's going to just release oxygen pretty easily. So that's the whole point. It's a trans. It's an oxygen transport protein. So what happens if we lock it in the in the oxygenated state? If we lock it in the what's called the R state, okay, the active state, so to speak, it's going to bind oxygen really tightly, um, even at low partial pressure. So it doesn't take a lot of oxygen. We don't have to have a high pressure here, partial pressure of oxygen, and it's just going to bind really tight. And the same thing when you lock it in the T state, or the deoxygenated form of hemoglobin. Okay, when you lock it in that state, it has a really, really hard time binding oxygen even at high. Even at high um, PO2. So that, that's what we can see. It has, it has a low affinity for O2 even at high 
PO2. Okay, so that's about all you'd have to do. The shape of the curves was the only important thing that they wanted in the question. Now this is a question kind of dealing with um, the same subject here. It says blood that is stored for some time becomes depleted of 2,3-BPG unless special precautions are taken. So explain what would happen if such blood were used in a transfusion. Well, the patient would risk tissue hypoxia, okay? So I'm going to write that down to start with. So the patient would risk hypoxia, okay? Because 2, 3, I should write it better here, 2, 3, B, PG, okay, 2,3-BPG stabilizes, so 2,3-BPG stabilizes the deoxy or T state, just like we talked about up there, the deoxy or T state of hemoglobin. Okay, so it stabilizes the T state of hemoglobin, encouraging Okay, encouraging O2 release at the tissues. O2 release at the tissue. Okay. So the patient would raise hypoxia, 2,3-BPG stabilizes the deoxy state of hemoglobin or T state of, hem of hemoglobin, encouraging O2 release, encouraging O2 release at the tissue. Okay. So without 2 B without BPG, right? So without 2,3 BPG, right? The R state is less likely to undergo the transition, okay? to the T state, to the T state, thereby, or I'll say failing, okay, failing to deliver O2 to the tissue, to the tissue, even when PO2 is high. Okay, so that would be a complete answer. <laughs> that was a lot of work. It was a lot of writing right there. Let's see if I can get it all on camera here. I don't know if I can. So basically what they're asking us to do here was say that we have blood that's been sitting for a long time. It's been stored for a long time and the 2-BPG um, has been depleted. Okay, what would happen if this blood were used in a transfusion? Well, the patient would risk this hypoxia. I mean, T3-BPG stabilizes the deoxy T state of hemoglobin, encouraging O2 release at the tissue. Okay, without T3-BPG, just like I discussed before, that's what gives it that S-shaped, that characteristic S-shaped curve. So without this 2-BPG in the blood, the R state is less likely to undergo the transition to the T state. And if that's true, if it's going to be, that means it's going to lock itself or be more likely to stay in the T, in the R state rather, then it's not going to want to give up oxygen. It's going to bind oxygen very tightly, even at, you know, high, uh, even at low PO2. So at low PO2, or partial pressure of oxygen, where you normally give the oxygen up to the tissue that needs it, because you're exercising or you're running or whatever you're doing, and um, in this case, it's not going to do that unless special precautions are taken. So you could actually really hurt somebody by doing this.